In this lab, we'll be continuing our discussion of the muscles of the upper extremity. On our practical muscle checklist, we're on column three, um, about uh, almost halfway down. We'll take a look at the muscles of the forearm. We'll start by looking at the anterior forearm. You can consider that the flexor compartment. Uh, so we'll see a lot of the muscles here are going to flex the wrist, flex the fingers. Then we'll finish up taking a look at the posterior forearm. This we can call the extensor compartment. So as the name implies, we're going to be using these muscles to extend the wrist, to extend the fingers. The first muscle I like to always identify is the brachioradialis. To me, this is kind of the dividing muscle. It separates the front of the forearm here. We just have the forearm laying um, with the thumb up, kind of laying on its side. So here would be the front, and then over here would be the back muscles, the extensor compartment. So the first muscle you want to identify is the brachioradialis. This actually runs from the distal part of the humerus and then it comes down onto the radius. So it's a muscle that's named on its attachments. This muscle is a muscle that flexes the elbow, but it doesn't do it, it, doesn't do it in the anatomical position. It does it in the neutral position. The neutral position is when our palms face our thighs. So it would be kind of doing like a handshake. Um, if you went to the gym to work out your brachioradialis, a lot of times you'll take the dumbbell and just kind of do like what they call a hammer, right? So you're going to do that hammer motion. That would be the brachioradialis, right? So the action is to flex the elbow in the neutral position. Now, we want to go to the muscles on the anterior arm. So what you want to do is you want to turn the model over so that the palm is face up. And so we can see here, here's the palm, it's face up. That means all of these muscles are on the front. And like I said before, these are what you want to call the flexor muscles. I always go from the thumb side over to the pinky side. That's, I do that consistently even when I do it on the uh, extensor side. I always go from thumb to pinky. Right? So however you want to do it, just be consistent. This way it's easy to, uh, to, to remember. The first muscles we're going to see are the superficial muscles. There's four of them. It's going to go like this. Number one, number two, number three, and then over here number, uh, number four. The number one muscle is the pronator teres. So this is the most oblique the second muscle is going to run along the radius, right, which is on the thumb side. You can follow this muscle right down to the wrist, it actually crosses the wrist. This is going to be called the flexor carpi radialis. The third muscle goes right to the palm. Any muscle that goes to the palm is called palmaris. So you can see they actually cut it, but this right end here would go right into the palm. So this is going to be called the palmaris longus. And then finally, running along the ulna, this bone over here, uh, this muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris. So let's take a look at what they do. These are actually pretty easy because most of the time the name gives you a good idea as far as what it does. So there's not much to memorize. The pronator teres does pronation. Right? So this is an actual movement of the forearm where the radius pivots over the ulna. Uh, and if you took a look at your uh, palm, your palm should face down. Or if you're in the anatomical position, your palm would face backwards. But it's not movement of the hand, it's actually movement of the forearm. The second muscle which runs along the radius is called the flexor carpi radialis. So the first two words tell you what it does. It flexes the wrist. Okay? It flexes the wrist. Palmaris longus goes right into the palm. Now this, this one here, the name doesn't tell us what it does, but it also flexes the wrist. So this works with the flexor carpi radialis to flex the wrist. And then finally, same thing here, flexor carpi ulnaris flexes the wrist. Okay, so pronator teres pronates, and then the three remaining muscles are all synergistic. They flex the wrist. So if we were doing dissection, we could remove these four muscles that I have labeled here and 
on our model we can actually do that we can remove them and now we see a muscle going down I'm sorry in the middle layer down below the the superficial layer this is called the flexor digitorum superficialis these actually go to the um, middle phalanges of our four fingers not the thumb but of fingers two through five and when they contract the name tells us again nothing to memorize they flex the fingers all right so they're gonna actually flex right up to the the, the uh, proximal interphalangeal joint they they don't go down to the the, the uh, distal phalange so they're not gonna flex the distal interphalangeal joint right they only gonna do the proximal interphalangeal joint but but for me you just have to know they flex the digits so this is the only muscle in the uh, middle layer the intermediate layer on this model we can remove this intermediate layer and we can now see the muscles that are deep there's two of them so this is the thumb over here on the thumb side right over here this is going to be called the flexor pollicis longus All right, so the name tells us it flexes the thumb on the more on the ulnar side this muscle all in here all this muscle in here is called the flexor digitorum profundus so now this one goes all the way down to your uh, distal phalanges so that means it crosses the distal interphalangeal joint and it flexes the, uh, those joints right there so both the flexor I'll go back one flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus they are synergistic to flex the fingers right so if you were to grasp uh, a bottle of water if you were to grasp your steering wheel you would be contracting both of those muscles the flexor digitorum superficialis the flexor digitorum profundus and then if you did curl your thumb around <coughs> excuse me, your thumb around also you would be doing the flexor pollicis longus all right so those are all the muscles on the front of the forearm remember front has an f in it they are flexors which has an f in it now <clears throat> once we want to do the back of the forearm we need to again find that brachioradialis make that your starting point so once you find the brachioradialis turn the model so that the palm is down right so notice I have the palm down the first two muscles we're going to do they both have the same name except one is longer and then the other one's going to be shorter so they both have the name extensor carpi radialis the longer one is the one on the outside so this one out here is going to be the extensor carpi radialis longus this one here is the extensor carpi radialis brevis then we're going to go over this muscle here it's kind of a flat muscle that runs around the back along the back of the forearm this is going to go to each one of the fingers fingers two through five so you can see the tendons kind of going right up to the fingers this one's going to be the extensor digitorum and then this one here is another muscle that goes to a finger but only to the pinky finger so this they call the extensor digiti minimi and then the last one that we're going to look at runs along the ulna over here extensor carpi ulnaris so notice I listed the muscles from the thumb side to the pinky side just like we did in the the flexor compartment right stay consistent whether you do it the other way just be consistent so you don't get uh, confused so let's take a look at the actions so the first two work together they have the same name so they work together and again there's really nothing to memorize they extend the wrist right extend the wrist right so both of these muscles are synergistic for extension of the wrist extensor digitorum again the name tells us nothing to memorize extends the fingers the extensor carpi ulnaris which is running along the ulna bone also extends the wrist and then finally the extensor digiti minimi again the name tells us extends the pinky or if you brought your pinky up that would be the extensor digiti minimi right, so if you notice again all of these muscles in the back are called extensors there's three more that we can see 
uh, from the from the back and kind of the side that move the the thumb so the first one we have here big muscle runs we don't see the whole tendon but runs along the side to the thumb here this is going to be called the abductor pollicis longus so that does abduction of the thumb and then the next two muscles here and all we see is the tendon right here these are both extensor muscles this is called the extensor pollicis brevis and the extensor pollicis longus both of those muscles extend the thumb so when we looked at the anterior forearm we saw a muscle called the pronator muscle pronator teres once we're in pronation we need to be able to get back so that our palm can face up that would be supination so we need a muscle to bring us up into supination so the way we're going to find that is go back to your brachioradialis once you find the brachioradialis you can pop that off on both models the large arm and the small arm and you'll see a muscle right underneath it this is the supinator right so when the forearm pronates this muscle contracts now we're pronated this muscle will contract to bring us back palm up right, so both of these muscles are working all day long to bring our palm up bring our palm down as a reference point that they're, they're kind of rotating the forearm so these are two antagonist muscles but again the only way you can see the supinator is if you remove that brachioradialis so I can't stress enough how important that brachioradialis is. It's necessary to identify our kind of a separating between the front of the forearm where the flexor muscles are and the back of the forearm where the extensor muscles are. And then you need to remove it to find the supinator, right? So it's a, a really important reference point. The last two st uh, structures on our checklist are not muscles. They're more tendons. So if we look at the palm here in the front, this muscle right I'm sorry this tendon right here is the flexor retinaculum it actually covers our carpal bones you could actually see an important nerve underneath here this is called the median nerve this is the nerve that becomes pinched when somebody has carpal tunnel syndrome so this is the flexor retinaculum what it's doing is it's holding all these tendons in place uh, kind of supporting the carpal bones underneath so it's an important uh, ligament Finally, on the back, kind of looking like a, you know, a watch band, there's a ligament that runs across and you can see the tendons right underneath it. This is known as the extensor retinaculum. And again, it's not a muscle, it's a ligament that holds the tendons of the extensor compartment down.